Hey everyone, welcome back! It's finally time for me to cover Steflos. I've been caught up in some newer games for streams, so I had to wait until later today to put out. The Steflos is an extremely fun weapon. In fact, it's probably some of the most fun I've had with a weapon in a long time. Something about the way it sounds, the goofy flower projectile. The slow but not too slow and easily fixable projectile going through enemies is incredibly satisfying. The weapon also shoots fast enough it feels smooth to use, but there are a lot of odd and not so useful things about this weapon too as well. It seems to be the cousin to the Tenet Arca, so let's get that out of the way first. It has significantly worse fall off than the Arca, so at ranges you would expect to hit enemies with the Tenet Arca, the Steflos won't hit. It's also a noticeably slower projectile too, so expect enemies far away to easily sidestep it. The fire rate is way higher, so unlike the Arca, you don't feel forced to throw on as much fire rate as you can fit. Reload is actually manageable with just a single reload source instead of needing multiple or a reload speed frame on Arca. This means you can run Steflos without stacking both Primed Reload and Merciless. Merciless alone is enough. The crit chance sucks though, and also lower status. Basically, it has much lower punching power, combined with less than half the base damage, and this is even before including Arca's progenitor bonus, which boosts it to almost four times the damage of Steflos. So yeah, if you want big dick TPS for longer runs, something reliable for endurance, or just harder content, stick to the Arca. This weapon has a 1.0 headshot multiplier, just like the Tenet Arca, and it means unless you're running headshot ability builds, like Prowl or Primary Deadhead Arcanes, you can just aim at the body. It can still register headshots though, by the obvious sound if you need something that requires it. Similar to the Arca, the Steflos has an 8 body punch through, but 0 terrain punch through unless you mod it on. Unlike the Arca, shots don't randomly bounce off like that Tenet version can, so it's really just an ever-expanding funny bubble. This weapon also has multiplicative gun CO, which the Tenet Arca has also. This means the weapon is much stronger than your conventional weaponry, but also means you need both base damage and gun CO on the build. Usually this comes from the weapon arcane. For a full list of weapons with multiplicative gun CO effects, check the description link. For funny builds, the Steflos has near-infinite projectile lifespan limit. I say limit because the base lifespan is short and increases when you hit enemies. The increase is small, so you need to hit several enemies for the size change to be noticeable. The lifespan buff, though, is very noticeable. Unfortunately, while the projectile can gain a size by hitting the same enemy multiple times, such as Meg Bubble or Zada's Whisper, it cannot actually deal damage to the same enemy multiple times, so you end up with a giant Sun and Magnetize and Zada setups. Funny, blinding, but doesn't really do anything. The purpose of the Steflos is really just to have fun. The visual design is pretty solid. It sounds funny, looks funny when shot, and feels good to shoot. I would not recommend using this for longer than 2 hour survivals or around the level 400 range. You also absolutely have to bring damage buffs if you want to use it above base steel path. Grouping tools are pretty handy for its giant hitbox and slow projectile. Any enemy caught in the expanding sphere counts as a hit. However, the projectile only counts collision with terrain if the very center collides, allowing a lot of corner shots and tighter angles. This makes it superb for shooting down hallway choke points. I would not consider this weapon meta-worthy, however it is still noticeably above average due to usable base stats combined with the multiplicative gun CO. You absolutely need to take advantage of this for it to be a competitive option on Steel Path. So let's look at our builds today. The first is our most basic, Corrosive Heat build. This weapon has a base 2.4 seconds reload speed. So I chose a single reload source, Primed Tactical Pump. A reload frame would also work, or if you want to use Primary Merciless instead of Deadhead. Also drops it to a still usable 1.8 seconds even without Primed Reload. Deadhead still benefits off headshots and turns the one times headshot into a 1.3 times. Shooting down hallways without grouping works well with Deadhead, whereas Merciless works best with grouping builds due to the lack of consistent headshots. Ensnare also works with Deadhead specifically, if you want. 
Lacking innate elemental progenitors for corrosive like Ten and Arca means you have to spend two slots for elementals. This makes us unable to slot Moda's setup unless we draw Prime Tactical Pump, but it would push us the 56% crit chance, reaching 101 with Arcane Avenger and 51.6% status. Unlike the Arca, it is not possible to make a 100% crit and 100% status Steflos without relying on status abilities. It does work perfectly with Citrine's Prismatic Gem granting status chance, but she is the only frame to give status chance currently. This is your basic Steel Path Fun Stick. Effective, immediate performance, and kills immediately when weapons arcanes are stacked up due to raw corrosive damage. Heat will also help to crowd control in a pinch. Projectile flight speed is strongly recommended in the Exilus, both for less fall off and easier hitting of enemies. It boosts fall off from 8 and 16 meters to 15.2 and 30.4. The natural engagement distance of guns is about 10 to 15 meters, so this works perfectly, as the default 8 to 16 meter falloff loses 80% of the total damage at the end. With Galvanize Acceleration, you only lose 4.2% of your total damage at the same 16 meters, or doing nearly 5 times more damage than before. The second build was a tentative gas hunter munition setup. I'm just gonna say, this was the weakest build today. The innate heat lets us get gas with a single toxin mod. Theoretically, this meant free slot for hunter munitions. Therefore, we kept the strong options of the corrosive build without giving up a slot. Prime Tactical Pump can be replaced by Prime to Point Blank if you want bigger upfront boom on your slash procs, or Moda set up for better crits and status. The problem is, remember, the weapon has 4 times less damage than Tenet Arca at base. On top of that, it also has much lower crit chance, making it difficult to land slash procs with any kind of consistency. Arcane Avenger boosts us to around 100%, but it requires kills to trigger even with combat discipline equipped. On a hell tank frame though, well I guess you can just take damage to proc it. It takes multiple shots to kill when you have no stacks, making it annoying to get the crits going to trigger slash from hunter munitions. Gun CO also doesn't kicking until you actually start getting kills, while gas proc damage doesn't scale with elemental percent, meaning using a 60% toxin mod alone doesn't nerf our gas dot, the weapon is weak enough that a non-scaling dot just doesn't work well even if grouped for quadratic scaling on the clouds. There isn't enough oomph to back it up, and it ends up performing, at best, equal to the corrosive build, with a lot more effort to build stacks beforehand, so would not recommend. The Viral Hunter Munitions build actually manages to work decently well. This is because the Viral procs boost the slash high enough to be viable on base steel path. It easily outputs double to triple the damage of the gas build due to higher fire rate, favoring stacking Viral procs. It pushes the weapon from questionable raw damage to viable competitor. Grouping setups work well here because the headshots are irrelevant. The Primed Bane is extremely important for double dipping bleed procs to make it compete with the corrosive building consistently kill in the first 1 to 2 seconds. This build also has one extra status effect compared to the gas build as heat, resulting in a higher gun CO multiplier. Slash procs kill with bleeds, meaning your raw damage sucks. Therefore, we go the primary merciless route. Chilling reload stacked on top makes our reload manageable at 1.4 seconds. Once again, I strongly recommend Galvanize Acceleration in the Exilus to make the weapon easier to use. It boosts the base falloff to 15.2 to 30.4 meter range. The natural engagement distance of guns is about 10 to 15 meters, so this works perfectly, as the default 8 to 16 meter falloff loses 80% of total damage at the end. With Galvanize Acceleration, you only lose 4.2% of your total damage at the same 16 meters, or doing nearly 5 times more damage. On the other hand, there is one thing it can do better than the Arca. It is a better Heat Inherit user for killing Demlists. Now, it isn't exactly a standout, but it does it pretty well. This is because it has much higher base fire rate and is also innate main weight heat. This lets you pump out heat procs much more quickly and consistently and have extremely high heat weight to offset the lower status chance. While this does not fully offset the 4 times damage gap between Arca and Steflos, it does fix most of it, and the more consistent heat procs with the overwhelming damage makes it feel better to use. It can also make good use of primary frostbite if you prime with epitaph, because a second crit damage mod does not exist for shotguns. Or you could use Compressa. 
Therefore, Prime to Point Blank would be the next best choice in the flex slot, allowing you to source 120% more crit damage and 90% multi-shot from an epitaph for Compressa's cold procs. The Compressa is honestly better but lacks AoE priming for survivability as it makes good use of secondary encumbered to proc every status effect beneath the moon for Steflos' gun CO as Compressa has one of the highest status proc applications per second of any weapon in Warframe. It is also innate viral, letting you get cold viral for damage boost, slow, and frostbite stacking. Heat Inherit works by applying the first heat stack with a weapon using as high heat percent as possible. It also needs a bane on it, because all heat stacks double dip banes by using one bane from whatever weapon did the first heat stack, and the second bane from whatever weapon made the later heat stacks. So a vast lock with heat and a bane to strip armor off the demolis works well. If you're using an epitaph or compressor to apply viral and cold with secondary encumbered to proc primary frostbite for Steflos. Our Staphlos itself will then apply more heat stacks after, boosted by the massive multiplicative gun CO, primed point blank, and free slots due to the innate heat. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe! Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with Citrine's last wish, stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!